All the way my Savior leads me Cheers each winding path I tread Gives me grace for every trial Feeds me with the living bread Hey, what's up, everybody? Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast. Clint Davis, your host. Thanks so much for joining us. We had a week off for Thanksgiving. We're back today, and we're going to jump in. First Kings chapter 2. Been reading through the story of David's reign. It came to a conclusion at our last devotional podcast in First Kings chapter 2. Now we pick this story up with the beginning of Solomon's reign in First Kings 2, beginning in verse 13. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. And she said, Do you come peacefully? And he said, Peacefully. Then he have, says, I have something to say to you. She said, Speak. And he said, You know that the kingdom was mine, and all that Israel fully expected me to reign. However, the kingdom has turned about to be my brother's, for it was, from, for it was his from the Lord. And now I have one request to make of you. Do not refuse me. She said, Speak. And he said, Please ask King Solomon. He will not refuse you to give me Abishag the Shunammite as my wife. Bathsheba said, Very well, I will speak to the king for you. So Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak on, uh, to him on behalf of Adonijah, who was the second son of David, if I could add that editorial note there, behind Absalom, who would have been the rightful heir to the throne. And the king rose to meet her and bowed down to her. Then she sat on his throne and, he had, and had a seat brought for the king's mother. And she sat on his right. And then she said, I have one small request to make of you. Do not refuse me. And the king said to her, make your request, my mother, for I will not refuse you. She said, let Abishag the Shunammite be given to Adonijah, your brother, as his wife. King Solomon answered his mother, why do you ask uh, Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Ask for him uh, the kingdom also, for he is my older brother, and on his side are Abiathar the priest and Joab the son of Zeruiah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, saying, God do so to me, and more also if this word does not cost Adonijah his life. Now therefore, as the Lord lives, who has established me and placed me on the throne of David my father, who has made me a house as he promised, Adonijah shall be put to death today. So King Solomon sent Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, and he struck, down, struck him down, and he died. And to Abiathar the priest, the king said, Go to Anathoth. To your estate, for you deserve death. But I will not at this time put you to death, because you carried the ark of the Lord before God, my uh, the Lord God before David, my father, and because you shared all of my father's afflictions. So Solomon expelled Abiathar from the priest to, to the Lord, thus fulfilling the word of the Lord that he had spoken concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh. When the news came to Joab, for Joab had supported Adonijah, although he had not supported Absalom, Joab fled to the tent of the Lord and caught hold of the horns of the altar. And when it was told King Solomon, Joab has fled to the tent of the Lord, and behold, he is beside the altar. Solomon sent Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, saying, Go strike him down. So Benaniah came to the tent of the Lord and said to him, The king commands, Come out. But he said, No, I will die here. Then Benaniah brought the king word again, saying, Thus said Joab, and thus he answered me. The king replied to him, Do as he said, strike him down and bury him, and take away from me and from my father's house the guilt for the blood that Joab shed without cause. The Lord will bring back his bloody deeds on his own head, because without the knowledge of my father David, he attacked and killed with the sword two men more righteous and better than himself, Abner the son of Ner, commander of the Lord's army, and Am Amasa, son of Jether, commander of the army of Judah. So shall their blood come back on the head of Joab and on the head of his descendants forever. But for David and for his descendants and for the, his house and for his throne, there shall be peace from the Lord forevermore. Then Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, went up and struck him down and put him to death. And he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. Then the king put Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, over the army in place of Joab. And the king put Zadok the priest in the place of Abiathar. Now, this is the beginning of the reign of Solomon. He has to do something very important here at the beginning, and that is to establish, right? At the very beginning, he has to establish his own authority. Up to this point, his authority had been questioned. As I said in the reading, the editorial note, Adonijah was the second son of King David. The first was Absalom. Absalom rebelled against his father. He was killed by Joab, rightly. Then 
Adonijah rose to power and decided he wanted to be the king, that he was going to take the throne that he considered to be rightfully his. And it would have been his had that been the Lord's will. Through ordinary progression, he would have been the next in line to receive the throne because his brother Absalom was out of the picture. Adonijah was the next person in line to receive the throne. But God had other plans. And through David had prescribed that Solomon would be on the throne, the son of Bathsheba. And Adonijah didn't like that, didn't want that to be the case. And so he goes to Bathsheba in an attempt to try to circumvent the process and ask Bathsheba to ask Solomon, her son, to give him Abishag the Shunammite as a wife. Why did he do that? Because Abishag was the one who was there with David at the end of his life. Weird story, but practice of the day, a, a young virgin was brought in at the end of David's life, and she laid with him, she cared for him, and she would have been a confidant to him. And so in some ways, she would have been like another wife, and so he wanted to marry this young virgin and make her his own wife. Why? He wanted to claim to the throne. And Solomon understood that, and so Solomon said, he's got to go. And so he takes care of the business that he needs to take care of, and so he kills Adonijah. But he also needs to take care of the other two, Abiathar the priest, who was on the uh, the right-hand man or the supporter of uh, Adonijah. And so Abiathar the priest is sent off into the wilderness to stay in his house in the country. He is removed from his duty and kept away from the city. Solomon did not kill the priest because it was not right to do so. And then he has to take care of Joab. Joab was the commander of David's army, who then became the commander of Adonijah's army. And Solomon recognized that if he let any of these guys have positions of prominence, any of these guys have life that they are to live and uh, to do uh, any kind of, op- give them any kind of opportunity to bring division among the kingdom, they would do so. And so he ended their lives, two of them lives, and one of them he took away his, his role and sent him off simply because he was a priest who carried the ark of the Lord before David as he danced as they brought it into Jerusalem in 2 Samuel chapter 6. And so there was a history with Abiathar. And so uh, Solomon, excuse me, decided he needed to take care of this problem once and for all and deal with these things. There's a decisiveness here that we must have as followers of the Lord. Decisions have to be made and we have to take action upon those decisions that we have to give evil no opportunity to... um, rear its ugly head, as it were, in the midst of the people of God. And so this is a, a, a an ext- we may consider it to be an extreme form of discipline, but this is an extreme form of discipline, putting someone out, taking, getting rid of the potential division that they would bring into the life of the people of God. Solomon had to establish his authority. Solomon had to establish his rule. He had to do so in the, uh, he had been given this authority by God, but he had to establish it so that the people would follow him and so that they would uh, submit to him as they, as he led them in the ways of the Lord and bring them submission to that they would follow the Lord. And so he had to take care of this divisive, these divisive, potentially divisive um, personalities and, 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 and men, and he had to deal with them decisively so that he could then move forward in the will of God. Sometimes we may have to do that. We have to decisively deal with things so that we can move forward in the will of God. You guys take care. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. You can.